Hello, everyone. Welcome into another edition of the Go Big Blue Country podcast. I'm joined by Nate Sestina, former University of Kentucky forward. Nate, how are you? Doing great. Doing great. Uh, kind of staying busy in, in the time like this and working out and trying to get in the best shape as possible. And now you're currently, what, in California working out? Yes, sir. How, how are those workouts going and how long have you been out there now? Uh, almost, I would say about four weeks. Um, and uh, they're going great. When I first got here, obviously I was, you know, I was a little bit slower. I was a little heavier. Uh, I didn't have access to a gym at home. So I was trying to find gym times and trying to find like outdoor courts and stuff. So it's a little bit different. You can't train as hard outside on like concrete, you know, you don't want to crush your knees or anything like that. But um, I got out here and kind of got set up with a schedule and with a, a training regimen. And, um, and I've been, been going at it two, three times a day for the last couple of weeks and my body's feeling good, um, taking care of myself, eating right, you know, back to what I was doing last summer when I first got to UK. So what's a daily routine like for you right now? I mean, I'm sure it's all focused around training and taking care of your body, but what are, what are some things that you're doing to sort of pass the time outside of basketball as well? Uh, I mean, you know, I wake up around 7.45, 8 o'clock, um, and, you know, you want to get – I make sure I get eight hours of sleep. I, I typically go to bed at, you know, 10, 45, 11. I, I, I'm young, but I feel like an old man. You know, I, I go to bed early. You know, I, I kind of get up early. But um, get up around 7, 45, 8. Uh, I, I've, I've been mixing it up. So I'll either go and do cardio in the morning before I eat, you know, burn some empty calories, uh, or, I'll, or I'll eat eat breakfast and get a cup of coffee and – uh, just to kind of enjoy myself. I've been watching a lot of film, um, different guys to watch, different um, different positions. You know, I'm not a guard, but I'm watching a lot of guard stuff with ball handling workouts, just to have the ball in my hand a little bit more. I got to get better at that. Um, and then I'll go and I'll lift. And uh, I have a, a full weight room and everything um, where I'm staying. And I have a full court in, indoor. So I'm, I'm super thankful for that and to have an opportunity like that. And uh, I'll lift and get a basketball workout in and then I'm um, staying on a vineyard actually. So there's grapes everywhere that need tucked up into the, the wires on the, on the vine. So uh, I've been doing that with my, my buddy, Matt, who, who I'm living with. Uh, we've been doing that and then get back into the gym again later. Uh, just shoot on the gun, get up 250 makes 250 shots. It kind of depends on how hard I had gone earlier in the day. And then, I've been, we have a pool and a hot tub too. So, you know, get in the pool, stretch, float, um, just kind of relax the body. And then been trying to read some books too, uh, trying to stay away from as many video games as I, as I can. It's hard, but uh, I play, I'll play video games at night with my buddies that I graduated with from Bucknell. But just, you know, keep the mind sharp, kind of don't want to lose touch with that. Um, and, and like I said, just watching a lot of film. Um, I'm on the phone a lot too. So I, I, I'm mad at myself. I try to stay off of it, but you know, you're, you're on the phone with, with calls or texts or FaceTimes and staying in touch with my family. You know, everybody's on the East coast. So. So has coach Cal recommended any books? I know he's big on recommending books for you. Um, he, like I said, he had recommended mind, uh, uh, or 10 minute toughness for me in the season. And I had finished that when I was home. Um, and then he asked me, he texted me the other day and was asking me how I was doing and if I was reading any books. So uh, he hasn't recommended any yet because I'm, I'm in the process of reading one called Mind Gym. So it's another a mindfulness one, kind of preparing yourself mentally for games and, and preparing yourself for your workouts and just a different way to think and kind of guide your thinking. And um, I'm pretty sure he's read it, though, but he, uh, he told me to tell him when I finish it so I can um, – He's gonna he'll he'll get me another one. Okay, now I want I want to talk to you about your time at Kentucky. Is it hard to believe it's been two months since you all went to Florida, and then everything happened so quickly later that week? Do you ever find yourself thinking about that? Actually, all the time. Uh, every time I put on some shoes to work out, or you know, I had my UK shorts on. I'm like, yesterday was my birthday, so I you know I. Uh, I get a call from Tyrese and we were just talking for like 15 minutes about some of the stories, like some of our favorite, you know, some of our favorite memories and talking about coach Payne and how funny he was during the season. At the time you're dead tired and he's, you know, he's picking on you a little bit and you're like, man, like this guy's always on my case. But then you look back at it and you're like, you know what? 
it, it was so fun because he would pick on some guys and then we would just he just kept going and then we're all like thank god he's not picking on me and then later in the day he'll come at you but uh just fun stuff like that and then I talked to all my teammates yesterday so you know we all share one of our favorite stories or you know we talk about that Florida game you know we, I was on FaceTime with Riley Welch the other day and he was watching the game and he was like dude like we really came back from 18 I was like I know <laughs> And, and everyone contributed in that game. I think yeah. that was the, the thing that stood out to me when I was down there covering the game was each one of you all had your moment, including EJ at the end with the tip in. But mm-hmm. I think talking about your time at Kentucky, I, I think we have to discuss the pregame spin move with TJ. <laughs> like, I believe that was one of my favorite things about the entire season is that thread started. What led to that? And it was just something that you and TJ just did. It, I wasn't even – I didn't mean to. So, you know, I, we wear the, the warm-up pants for the game, and I was just tying my – the you know, the string on the inside because they were falling down. So I was running in, like, the door was closing to kind of go into that little room in, in our locker room. So I was like, oh, crap. And I tried, like, squeezing through, and then I just spun. You know, I got out and I spun. And I didn't know TJ was filming. So then, you know, afterwards he comes out and he's like, you got to see this. And then ever since then it was just – I, I started doing it, and the one game he wasn't he wasn't there, uh, we lost. So I was like, okay, TJ, like, what are you doing? Like, I think it was at Auburn he wasn't there. So I was like, oh, my gosh, man, like, you're messing up the routine. And then we got back on it, and we started winning some games again. So uh, it was – I'm, I'm like – I'm a goofy, lighthearted kid. I try not to be too serious when I – but when it comes time to the game, I, you know, I'm locked in. But I – it was just one of those things that – ended up turning into a spin and then I'd start like hitting all my teammates while well, I pretended to like beat up Riley all the time. Yeah. My, I believe my favorite one was the Texas tornado. That was the one I think that he, <laughs> he titled the one at Texas tech. And I was at that point, I was so locked in that I was, I literally put it on Twitter alert just so I could see what the next one was. That's fantastic. <laughs> oh man. But uh, talk a little bit more about your time at Kentucky. I mean, I know that year went by so quickly. I talked to you when you first committed last year, and then right before you got to campus, I talked to you again. When you look back on that year, was it everything that you hoped it would be? Absolutely. Um, you know, you, you, when you go through that recruiting process and Coach Cal calls you for the first time, and I sent a screenshot of the call. I sent it to my friends. It's like, now you're never going to believe who I'm on the phone with. They were like, all right, like, yeah, okay. And just the, the whole process leading up to when I was getting to campus, I was so anxious to get there. I was so anxious to get back into playing and, and just being there and getting better and, and really seeing, like, what it takes to play there and how, like, how you can be successful. You don't have to be a number one draft pick. You don't have to be a lottery pick or, you know what I mean, to, to be successful there. And I think that that's one thing that I – in my head, I really tried to, to focus on, you know, like I know that my journey to play professional basketball is going to be very different than a lot of people that go there. But like I fully bought into that. And that's something that I, I really take pride in um, and just, you know, fully accepting that and, and embracing that and just living it out and, you know, working hard every day and, and just, you know, I, I had a lot of ups and downs and like I had a really, you know, the start of the season, I was on this, like, I was, okay, I'm, I'm in great shape. I'm playing pretty well in practice. The games are going great. Uh, I'm playing how I, I wanted to. And then I break my wrist. And I'm like, no, like, why? I, I wanted one full healthy season, you know. And it's, it's part of it. And I, if I would have been 18, I would have, you know, I would have been devastated. Like, no, oh, come on. But it's like, okay, I, I got to get back. I got to get back into shape. You know, I have to, to – embrace this process as well this is just a little side step to, or a little side road to back getting onto that path and, and I had great family I have great friends and the great coaching staff that supported me and still believed in me as I was going through that process to rehab and everything and then you have a game like Ohio State where you're like okay I feel great and then you come back into SEC play and you don't score for a month or you don't rebound for a month and I'm like what the heck like yeah. and then it, coach recommends that book and it's like, you know, like for me, like I'm a very, like, try to be a very faithful kid. And I'm like, it's a sign from God. Coach is looking out for me and hands me this book. And it changed how I thought about the season. You know, it changed how I prepared for everything. And you have a game like LSU. And you're like, boom, okay, I'm back. I'm feeling good. And then we start winning a bunch of games. And we're playing really well. And then you lose to Tennessee. And you're like, 
what the heck? Like we just beat Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. And then you go into Florida, you know, you go into Florida without Ashton and you go into Florida and Emmanuel fouls out, which I give him crap for all the time because he never fouls. And so now you have six people, four freshmen, you know, or three freshmen, four freshmen, whatever, we had seven guys, whatever it was, and then three veterans. So it's like me, EJ, and Nick, and then the re- – Tyrese, Johnny, Keon. And it's like, oof. All right, like we got – you know, we got we to gotta play. And we did. And we played so well. Everybody bought into just winning that game. Um, so, yeah, there was, there was a lot of highs and there were a lot of lows. But I think just staying on that – that course, you know, just trusting that everything is going to happen the way it's supposed to. And, you know, it, I, I remember distinctly when Ashton leaned over or on the bus back from the SEC tournament when it got canceled and he just leans over and he's like, they just canceled the whole thing. And I was just like, no way. Like, that's the reason I came here. You know, like I, I came here to get better and to play in the NCAA tournament and make a run at a national championship. And I really thought we were on that path. You know, I really thought that we were – we were really, really good. We were clicking, and we were all playing well. And I, we needed six more games to do it. Yeah. I was, uh, I was definitely planning on covering games into April, <laughs> the, the way you all played down the stretch. But you touched on the ups and downs, and now mm-hmm. the transfer that seems to be a new thing that not only Kentucky's doing, but it, it's happening all over college basketball. Well, you know, Coach Cal and the staff they went out and got three. Mm-hmm. Off season here, one of them's a grad tra- graduate transfer like yourself, Davion Mintz. What would yep. be your advice to him coming in? He's a guy that actually missed off last season with an injury, Nate. So, what would be your mm-hmm. advice to him coming into Kentucky for a year? It, I I would I talked to him a little bit actually on the phone. I got his number, and he and I were talking when he first committed. And I was like, "Listen, like this is going to be the hardest year of your life. Um, there are going to be highs, there are going to be lows, but." It, it like don't listen to people that are outside of your family and outside of that locker room because it's they're the ones that are doing it with you you know they're the ones that are practicing they're the ones that are lifting and running sprints and watching the film and all of the stuff that you you don't necessarily see that when it's on camera you know and, and they film a lot of our practices and stuff but it's like it's the other workouts you know the ones late at night when you're in the gym with two of your teammates playing one-on-one and it's 10 30 you know, you, you finish you finish practice, you do your homework, and you're like, all right, like, who wants to get in the gym? And you just have moments like that where it's like all the outside noise, all the outside stuff doesn't matter. Just focus in on what you're trying to do and, and buy into that. Like whatever you need, whatever the coaches need from you, just that is what you need to do. Don't play outside of yourself. Don't under, like, don't undersell yourself or anything like that. But like if coach needs you to go rebound, like you better go rebound. If you need to lock up on defense, like, you better do that. Because Coach Cal every year brings in eight new guys. He has a whole new team every year. And he's so good at it. He's so good at, at taking all those guys and getting them to buy in by, like, July. And it's like, okay, yeah, obviously you're going to be shaking some stuff off. You're, there's still high school kids coming in. So it's like, okay. But now you have three guys that have – played college basketball they understand the the little nuances of college basketball and like with Davion he's done this at a really high level in a really good conference for a good program so he understands like okay he's got one chance left and this is the best place to do it yeah now you mentioned Keon earlier and uh, Mm -hmm. there's one guy that we didn't mention who didn't play this year Dante Allen tell Mm -hmm. tell BBN a little bit about what you expect from Keon as a sophomore and what can they expect out of Dante Allen? That's a guy that he joined practice, I think around maybe new year's somewhere through yep. there started working with you all. Just tell them a little bit about what to expect from those two. Keon Brooks and, and I, Keon was one of my really close friends on the team this year. You know, we, we worked out all the time. We lifted and stuff together, but he's one of those kids that he's a gym rat. He loves it. He lo- like KP was really hard on him. Cause he knows that, you know, you push Keon and he's going to push back, you know, he's going to fight back. He's a fighter. And it really started to click for him at the end of the year. And it's starting to get dangerous. He's feeling strong. He's confident. He's in great shape. Obviously the kid's an incredible athlete, um, but he's going to have an unbelievable sophomore season. You know, he's, he's going to be 
in great shape. Like I said, he's going to be in great shape. He's going to be stronger. He's going to have a year under his belt where he now understands, like, college basketball is rough, you know. You're going to get bumped. You're going to get pushed. You're allowed to push back. And I think he's – it started to really click for him. And, and he is just going to – he's a dangerous, dangerous player because he can, he can do everything. He can post up. He can play on the perimeter. He can guard. He can guard big guys. I mean, he was guarding Nick in practice. Nick's 50 pounds heavier than him. So – he put on a little bit of weight too, so he's feeling good. Um, so he's gonna have an unbelievable sophomore season. And for Dante, Dante is another one of those kids. I mean, he had three thousand points in high school. Like he scores the crap out of the ball, and we were like, okay, like you can score, but like what what else can you do? And he was starting to it, I mean, obviously you come off of an injury like that, you're you're nervous to to really play and kind of push yourself, and then. It was like probably mid-January, late January, it clicked, and he just started to play better, you know. He felt more comfortable with the ball, starting to understand the plays a little bit. Um, defense was still was still a little shaky because it's different. Like, you in high school, you didn't have to play help side defense. And now you have to be there or you get scored. Like, you get scored on, you get dunked on. So it was starting to really click for him, and, and he's another one of those kids. He's always in the gym. I mean, he's, he's in the early mornings, late nights. Um, he's in there before practice, after practice, and I'm I'm excited to see him play. I we we would play one on one in some of our workouts when me, him, and Riley would work out. And in Dante's, he shoots the crap out of the ball. He can get to the ball, get to the hoop, and he's long, and he can finish around guys. He's got like a seven five wingspan. So I'm really excited to see him. I'm excited to see him get into into incredible shape, uh, and and really watch him play. Now, a couple more questions, and we'll wrap this up. When when you look back at all the games that you played at or played in, at or the game against Louisville at Rupp Arena, you went to the Garden, mm-hmm. played Michigan State, all those SEC road games. Which one stands out the most to you, though, when you look back on it? Oh, wow. Um, Michigan State's really up there for me. I Unfortunately, uh, Nick was hurt, so I, I started. But fortunately and unfortunately, but – to hear my, you know, to hear my name get called through the speakers at Madison Square Garden, um, and they, you know, they announced where you're from, and they said from Emporium, Pennsylvania, and like my mom and dad and my brother and sister were there. Like that just that meant a lot to me. Um, that Texas Tech game was, oh my gosh, that was crazy. Their fans were nuts. There were that place was packed for warmups. Like there, it was it was like the Louisville game at home. You know, you walk out for warmups, and there's twenty three thousand people there. It. I would probably say Texas Tech, Madison Square Garden, um, obviously the Louisville game. And then uh, Auburn at home for me was a, a, just a game where I, I was feeling really good because we all practiced so hard for like three straight days. And we were bought into what we were doing and we executed it. I don't know perfectly, but perfectly for the game. You know, we won, we played hard, we bought into like, we switched one of the things in our defense like two days before the game and it worked. And so we were like, okay, we can be challenged. We can be pushed and we can execute in like a short amount of time. So it just really showed in my head, it showed like the growth of the team. And we're not, you know, they're not just high school kids. These kids are quick. They're smart. They're like, they're ready to go. And they really bought in. Now, uh, didn't get to touch on, the senior night. I know that's that's a game with Tennessee. You you want to forget, yeah. that, um, but there there was a moment before the game where your family was there with you. What was going through your mind as you're there with your family? You're standing at center court at Rep Arena. You're listening to my old Kentucky home plan. Mm-hmm. Probably, I mean, I mean, I think it's safe to say you probably never thought that you would be at that point in your career. What, what's going through your mind when you're there embracing your family? In all seriousness, I'm a I'm a huge mama's boy, so I. I gave my mom a hug and I just, I told her like, this isn't like, we're not done yet. You know, I, I want to be a professional basketball player and I want to help my, I want to help my parents out. And I I just whispered to her, I was like, like, I'm going to make this happen. And and she gave me a big hug and like coach Cal gave my sister a hug, gave my parents a hug. And my sister's like, Oh my gosh, like he is so incredible. You know, he's so like family oriented. And, um, and that's like, that's a big reason why I went there. And I think that was just like this, big like overlapping thing and I I just when I was standing there with my teammates I was just like you know what like this really is like it really is a family and you have all these people from all these different backgrounds coming in and it's just one big family and I'm a big family oriented kid too so it it just meant a lot to me that my teammates were were so accepting me of 
uh, throughout the year and my coaching, the coaching staff was accepting of me and, and big blue nation as well. I mean, everywhere you go, they just, they love you. They know everything about you. And um, it was just a moment that I have a picture of everybody and I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to frame it. I'm going to have that forever. It's just, it was so incredible. You know, you have all these people that I've been watching on TV for so long and like, I'm standing center court at Kentucky with coach Cal and his wife next to me and all my teammates. So it was just a, a, a moment that I'm never going to forget. Just, it was, it was pretty, pretty peaceful for me. Cause I was like, you know what? I, I, I did it. You know, I, I played here. I pushed myself, you know, I, I got better, but like, like I said, it's not done. And, and I, I'm really excited about that. And final question. I, I know John Calipari, he, he can say a lot of funny things. You know, we <laughs> see the video clips. We, we, in the press conferences, he's like that. What is the funniest thing that you will always remember that he said to you in a practice or just to the team in a meeting or something? What's one thing that's oh, oh, man. Um, it was funny for me. I don't know if it was funny for Nick, but when we – we were, I can't remember who we were playing. It was a, it was a home. Year. We ended up winning the game, but there was like three possessions in a row where he like, didn't, he went after a rebound with one hand, which coach obviously hates. Um, I think he got called for a moving screen and then he fouled a kid or something. He went to block a shot and he fouled a kid and coach was like, don't jump. Like you need to play smart. You have three fouls or something. It was something like that. And I remember Nick came off the court and and, you know, like, you could be up by 40 and coach is still yelling, you know. And, he, and we, I think we were up by, like, 15 with a little bit of time left. And Nick goes, coach, like I didn't move, like, on the screen. And he goes, just, just watch the film tomorrow. And we were like, oh, no. Like, coach watches film religiously. Like, he always has his iPad walking around. And he, I remember he walks to the bench and he goes, well, I'll watch it all right. And he comes in the next day with his coffee for film. You know, it was a Wednesday, I think. We had, we had an off day, so we were watching – or we, we had film that day. So, we're, we're, you know, we're watching film, and coach comes in. He goes, just so he knows, I watched the film today three times. And he goes, and Nick, you moved. And he pulled the clip up, and he played it for, like, five straight minutes in slow motion, and Nick's setting an illegal screen. And he looks at, he looks at coach, coach Payne. He goes, KP, did he move? He goes, yeah. He looks at all of us. He asks everybody, like, individually, did he move? And he goes, Nick's like, yeah. He goes, okay. He goes, just so you know, I watch everything. He goes, and I know everything. And we're like, and I just like, it was just one of those times where like, it wasn't funny for Nick, but everybody else is dogging him. You know, we're all making fun of him. And and coach also asked me if I, uh, if I, I was in, I missed a couple shots in practice one time. He goes, can you shoot threes? And I was like, yes, sir. He goes, can you make threes? And I was like, Yes, sir. And he asked everybody in the gym, all the coaches, all the players, the managers, and then the two guys filming practice up top, can he shoot threes? And they're all like, yeah. And he goes, okay, quit pump faking and shoot. So I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> well, it sounds like you have some great memories to carry with you awesome. wherever you go. And, I, and I'm sure there's a point where you will be back at Kentucky to, you know, to take in a game and take in the atmosphere. And oh, for sure. No doubt. Well, Nate, I really appreciate you taking some time to join me. Best of luck with whatever you. awaits you after this, and uh, just stay safe. Absolutely. You too. Thank you for having me. No problem. He's Nate Sestina, and I'm Sean Smith. Thank you for listening.